Here we go. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, February 13th, 2013. Um, today, uh, let's go over the results first, okay? We were... On the Russell, we were minus one tick. On the NQ, we were minus eight. On gold, plus four. Soybeans, plus six. And crude oil, plus five. Uh, so we, you know, we had a, a net up day again, better than two points. Um, it took us 14 minutes and two trades this morning to get to plus two points. We took um, our first trade was plus three ticks on gold. It actually went much more than that. I had moved my stop, trailed my stop to break even plus three ticks. Uh, when it was when it was dropping down, it went to plus nine, I think, eight or nine, and I had my stop at plus three ticks. Um, and then the soybeans, um, we took six ticks on soybeans in the next trade, um, <clears throat> and that put us at a little over two points. Um, all right, uh, let's just start with the soybeans today. All right, we'll go right there now. It, in the pre-market on the soybeans today. In the pre-market on the soybeans today, we had, let's see, there was some big movement. I didn't take any of these trades, but I did highlight them. Um, this was very early pre-market when the market started to move down. Um, I'll show a picture here. I used this in the live trading room as an example. Um, oh, let's look at the short side of this. Okay, you look for your bearish cross which was actually way up here, bearish cross. Your test of the BBC, you know, price pulls away from the BBC, the space right in here, like this space right in here, pulls back up, tests the BBC, and gives a down close. And you have bearish divergence with a red cycle down here. All right? So the entry on that would have been right in there at 14.19. 14.19 per bushel. Um, now the next trade was down here. And I'll bring up a picture for that one. All right. Um, here we go. We'll look at this on this side. When price has so much momentum that it doesn't pull back all the way to the BBC, you can draw a little trend line up the bottoms like this when it starts to pull back, when it tries to pull back. And then as long as you have divergence down here on the bottom, Frank, as long as you have divergence down here on the bottom, you can take that close below the trend line, all right? The cycle doesn't have to be the right color as long as there's still divergence there. You can, you can take that close below the trend line, all right? Down close below the trend line. Down close below the trend line is what you're looking for, all right? In this particular case, in this example over here, you see how the, uh, the cycle portion wasn't the right color, but the down close below the trend line is what you were looking for. Same thing over here on the other side, the long trade, the up close above the trend line with a red cycle. That's what you were looking for. Okay. Now that's what I'm going to be showing you again and again and again on all these charts. All right, those two things that we just showed. My first trade on the soybeans was right here. Price, we had the bullish cross, pulled away, came back, tested the BBC, gave an up close, but we had red on the cycle, so I waited for an up close on the other side of the trend line. All right, I got in on the other side of the trend line. I put a target right in here at six ticks, and it took me out at six ticks. It went about four more than that, and then it came back down. Gave another opportunity right in here. I didn't take this one. That one went about four or five ticks. Then it got choppy in here for a little while. No, this is, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes in here. It got choppy. And then up here, it got choppy again. We didn't trade anymore in the soybeans. The next opportunity to trade would have been right here. That went four ticks. Um, then, let's see. That, that was the last opportunity to trade the soybeans. Okay. Um, and that's where it stands on the morning. Uh, well, right now, it's, uh, we don't have any divergence on the bottom, so there's no opportunity right now either. All right, now I'm going to go over to the left where the crude oil is, and I'll start over there. I didn't mark up the trade that I took on crude this morning. I don't know why, but it was just a five-tick trade anyway. Um, but you can see right here we have bullish divergence. This is the current market. We have bullish divergence prices coming back to test the BBC. If it actually hits the BBC and gives an up close, that would be a spot where you could go long. If it doesn't hit the BBC, then you would need an up close. Okay, it did hit it. So if it gives an up close, now you could go long. As long as on the close of this bar, the cycle is still blue. All right. If the cycle's red on the close of the bar, then you're going to need an up close above the trend line. So pay attention to that if you're looking at this trade. 
you know, if any of you partners are out there looking at that trade. Um, <clears throat> now we'll quickly just jump right into this this morning. Let's see, I think the trade that I took was, was it over here? I don't know, I don't remember. I don't remember where it was. It was a five tick trade. And it ended up, I think it ended up going farther than the five ticks. Um, it may have been over here somewhere, something like that. It doesn't really matter. I'll just go through the actual trade setups, okay? Um, on the open, there was nothing right in here, okay? On the short side, there was nothing. On the long side right here, uh, 9.31 right at the open on the long side, um, you had a bullish cross, price pulled away, it came back, tested the BBC and gave an up close, and here's your bearish divergence down here on the bottom. All right, so that up close right there was the spot to get long. Um, it changed directions, let's see, after it pulled down, you didn't get any divergence until over here, but the trend line was way down here, so there was no opportunity in there. Um, over here, by the time it closed down, I didn't take this trade. The black line had moved up across the green, so there was nothing to do in there. Um, it got pretty choppy right in here. We had crude inventories come out. All right. Yeah, that's what it was. I didn't take any crude trades until after the inventories came out. Um, it got pretty choppy in here, and we had less of a build than what was anticipated. All right. And so we were expecting price to drop, and you can see that it did drop. Um, in here, the the opportunity that I have highlighted right here was a shorting opportunity. I don't think that's where I took the trade. I think I waited more than three minutes to get to get into there. Um, over here might have been where I did actually take the trade, right down here. All right, when price was price was moving pretty quick in here, and there was a trading opportunity right here on. Actually, that was an up close below the trend line. On a down close below this trend line right here. This down close right here had bearish divergence. All right, so that was the spot to take the trade. And I thought the trade that I did take went on to to make quite a few more points or more ticks than what I took out of it. That might have been the spot that I traded. I'd have to go back and look. But anyway, um, price moved down. Then over here there was another opportunity. We needed a down close below the trend line. The down close happened right there. That one happened really fast. You know, it gave five or six ticks really fast, and then it turned around. Um, over here, there's no trade. The MA1's on the wrong side. You have bullish divergence. Price is trading below the BBC. There was nothing in there. Nothing in here. Over here was a nice opportunity. Pull back up. It didn't actually hit the BBC, so you needed to draw the trend line, and you needed a down close below the trend line with divergence on the bottom. A down close below the trend line with the divergence, like that. All right, so that was a nice opportunity right in there. Over here on the long side, this was the up close with the bullish divergence. All right. Here's your bullish divergence. Here's your cross. There's the space. Tested the BBC with the up close, and up it went. All right, and that that's pretty much that's pretty much how the day went. We haven't traded any more on the crude oil since then. Um, that one that I pointed out earlier was pulling back down to the BBC. We needed an up close. We didn't get the up close, so there's no trade in here right now. Okay, no trade in there at the moment. Um, we'll look at the Russell. I took two trades on the Russell. 1018, somewhere in there was about where my trade was. Let's take a look. 1018. Right in here, this this down close right in here, you think? That was the spot right there. It may have been. I don't remember. I usually mark it up, but I don't. Something else must have happened right after. Because I didn't take the, I didn't mark it up. Um, on the Russell this morning, we had two trades on the Russell, one win and one loss. All right, we took this win right here pretty early on. Um, again, we had the bullish cross pull away. Price started to pull back toward the BBC, but it didn't get there. We had a nice bullish divergence, and we had an up close above the trend line. Okay, I took the up close above the trend line. I took, I think I took seven ticks profit in that trade. Seven ticks. It went about nine, and I took seven. Um... All right, uh, after that had happened, it had so much momentum, it pulled back and gave another opportunity in here, and it moved up. I tried to jump in on the third one, and the third one went against me and stopped me out. So 
this was an eight tick stop out. This was a seven tick win. That's what put me at minus one. All right. After that, it just tanked, and we didn't have any opportunities in here on the way down. Okay. It's in, it's right at the weekly trading zone right now, so I wouldn't really take any trades in here. You know, we have bearish divergence, and we're trading above the BBC, and we're right inside the weekly trading zone. So, nothing in there. Okay. Um, oh, you know what, Pete? I remember that now. It happened so fast, remember? It went so fast, and I said, okay, I, I said to get short, and then I got short. And then I said, okay, I'll move my stop to plus five ticks. And and then it it dropped down to like plus eight or nine. And I had my stop at plus five. And then it just came right back up through it and took me out at plus five. All right, that's what happened. I remember now. Now that you mention it, I remember talking about it. All right, on the gold, what did we get? Plus four ticks on gold. We took two trades on gold. All right, this was right after the open here. Price came up, tested the BBC, and gave a down close. The actual entry was right in here. I entered here. Actually, you know what? When this was coming together, this hadn't actually touched the BBC. That's why I waited for this down close over here and not this one here. Um, this hadn't actually touched the BBC when the next bar had painted. Um, so I waited for this down close right here. You see we have bearish divergence, bearish cross, space. So this is step one. The space is step two. Test of the BBC with the down close is step three, and the bearish divergence with the red cycle, step four. So I shorted right in there, and I took some profit right down here. Okay. Um, there was another opportunity in here. If you had taken it, it would have stopped you out. Then I didn't take anything in here. A uh, news event came right over here. There was an opportunity to short right in here, just like the other one over here. There was an opportunity to short right in here, right on top of the news. I didn't. I didn't do it. Um, not right on top of the news. There was another opportunity over here to short, and this one worked out too, if you would have taken it. I think over here, this one had gone for about 17 or 18 ticks, and then it gave this little spot right here. Remember talking about this this morning? It had this little, this little tiny bit of divergence right here, and I had pointed out the down close on that right there. Um, um, and that's it. Then we, we had nothing in here for a little bit. Did we? Actually, there was something in here. No, there wasn't. I had drawn that trend line and we didn't get, we didn't get a close below the trend line until the, there was no divergence left. Okay. Um, let's see. We had a test of the BBC over here with a down close. There was an opportunity right in there. It drew down six ticks before moving down. Over here, there was no opportunity. Um, on the long side right here. A nice long trade right here if you would have gotten into that. And another one right in there. Um, there were probably, you know, I remember talking about this, how it was doing this slow grind up right here. And how I didn't like the trades that were happening in there because the the green line wasn't pulling back very far. Um, then we got some chop in here. And once it finally made a decision to go down, I shorted over here. I moved my stop to break even plus a tick. And then it dropped, you know, I don't know how many ticks, like 20 ticks or so. It dropped down. Um, there was plenty of opportunity in there, too, that I missed. All right. Um, there was a short trade right in here, this down close right here. That would have stopped you out if you had taken it, and a long trade right here where you would have gotten it all back if you had taken it. Um, there's another one right here, a short trade right in there, and currently there is nothing. Okay. We ended plus four ticks on that. Um, on the NQ now... Let's look at the NQ. Here was our stop out on the NQ. We missed all the good trades. And we took one trade on the NQ and it stopped out. Um, there was an opportunity to short right in here after the bearish cross. Test of the BBC, the down close. Now what I want everybody to take away from this, if you haven't realized it already, I'm going from market to market. I'm using the same set of indicators on every single market. And I'm using the same trade setup. I'm using the same time frame. So you can... You know, what I do is I have I have all these markets open in front of me, you know, like this, just so you can see you can see what price is doing. You know, when you have all the markets open in front of you, so you can see what price is doing. And the setup is always the same. The setup is always the same. So when I see it set up on any one of the markets, I'll either take the trade or I'll tell you that the trade is setting up or whatever the case may be. Like right here on the ES, we have bearish divergence. 
We're testing the BBC. A down close right here would be a trade you could take. I wouldn't take it inside the weekly trading zone, but that's a trade setup, and it's a trade you could take. Um, Earlier this morning, over here, over here, sorry, Frank, over here on the uh, over here on the natural gas, there was a trade that set up over here, and and I think Frank had pointed it out to me. Frank and a couple other guys actually pointed out to me that there was a trade setting up over here, and uh, you know they had gotten long in here and stuck it out through this whole thing right here. I would not have. I would have gotten out of break even, but um. Frank took a little bit of profit on it. I don't know if any of the other guys took profit on that, but it ended up moving up very nicely. There was another opportunity right here. There was just a little bit of divergence. It closed above and moved up. There was another opportunity at the close of the morning session right here where it moved up, and now it doesn't have anything. But you know, with all the markets open and you're looking for the same exact thing, you can almost ignore what, what the symbol is and just put the trade on based on what the what the pattern is in front of you it's the same set of indicators so you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again um all right so where was i i was talking about the nq i took a trade in here on the nq and i lost eight ticks stopped me out just about to the tick and then went down like i wanted it to um there was a big move up in here on the nq there was an opportunity to jump into it about halfway in right here i missed that um, little move down over here Another move down over here that we had missed this morning. All right, so you can see there's a lot more opportunities than what I'm taking. I I often say that I miss probably 80% of the trades because I'm answering questions and and training and mentoring and teaching and things like that. Um, but if you focus on a single market, you should do much better than I did. You know, much better. Um, yes, you have to be able to add and subtract by four. If you can do that, you can do this. Um, <laughs> it's uh, like right over here on the natural gas. Again, you can draw a trend line down this. Right here we have two bars. You can draw a trend line. We don't have divergence yet. I don't think we're going to get divergence. If we get an up close on this bar, we're not going to have any divergence. So there'd be nothing you can do over there. Um, let's see. Let me finish up what I was doing here. I started out to the left. We had the crude oil. I did the Russell. I did gold, the NQ. I did the soybeans, the ES, this morning. Um, I didn't take any trades on the ES again. Let's see. Right in here, there was nothing for divergence in here. When when we were looking to be able to take a long trade in here, there was no divergence. When we were looking to be able to take a short trade, um, there was divergence, but no down close, and the weekly trading zone right below. Um, let's see. I had drawn this trend line in here because someone had asked me to. Um, and it gave an up close, but we didn't have any divergence at the time. Over here right now, it just gave a down close on this bar, but it's right inside the weekly trading zone. Okay, So you would need to draw a trend line. Because there's blue on the cycle, you would need to draw a trend line and have a down close below that trend line. All right, There's divergence and everything, and that would bring everything down. So if you got a down close below this trend line, that's a possibility on the ES. Um, I think I've covered all the markets. Let me just cover some of the questions. Um, if I had one market to watch, which one would I pick? Well, it depends what time I was able to trade. You know, if you're able to trade, if you're only able to trade, let's say you're able to trade in the pre-market. Um, the markets that move well in the pre-market are the euro, the yen, um, gold, and crude oil. If I had to pick one market out of them, yeah, that's what, that's what I was saying, Frank, the 6J and the 6E. If I had to pick one market out of them, I think I would probably pick the yen. Depending on the time, though. If I could trade only from like 8 o'clock to 9 or 8, 8 to 9.30 a.m. Eastern, then I might, pick, um, I might pick gold. I like gold a lot. Gold and crude oil, I like them a lot. And they always move. There's always some kind of movement on gold and crude oil during the day. Yeah, the the um, the soybeans moved a lot today. You can see them. Look at them now. Um, the soybeans moved a lot today in the pre-market. Uh, let me just point out where this trade would have been right over here. Okay, you draw a trend line down the tops. You have your bullish divergence. Now the cycle down here, the slingshot, the slingshot is everything to the whole trading thing. You know, it's everything. 
you get your bullish cross that gives you some direction what you get out of the uh, what you get out of the slingshot is some range on the trade you know the the potential in the trade is the distance between the green line and the cycle in the slingshot okay you see how it's moved up here the entry in the trade was right down here okay the up close above the trend line right there on that bar and the range in the trade is the distance between your entry and the green line getting up into the cycle so it got all the way up here into the cycle okay and once it gets up into the cycle you expect it's going to pull back give you some more divergence and give you another opportunity to enter okay uh, I wouldn't say it's the worst to trade the question was so the ES is is one of the worst to trade I wouldn't say it's the worst to trade I'd say it's uh, the one you're gonna have the least amount of uh, opportunity on okay that's what I would say um, you know there's if you're looking for something that's 1250 a tick the soybeans are 1250 a tick the yen is 1250 a tick the euro is 1250 a tick okay if that's the thing you're looking for in a in whatever vehicle it is you're going to trade you know if you're looking for something with a ton of liquidity well how many contracts are you looking to trade you're going to trade a hundred contracts you're going to trade a thousand contracts if you're going to trade a thousand contracts then the ES might be the one for you okay but you're only going to trade once or twice um, if you're going to trade you know 50 contracts something like that then any one of these markets would work you're going to have some slippage but any one of the markets would work okay if you're going to trade three then any one of these markets would be just fine all right any one um, let's see I, I was pointing out I, I was trying to point out to you markets that have some pre-market activity um, this was gold this morning you see gold had this big move down right here right before the open all right and this big move up after the news events came out so gold is really reactive to uh, to news events and things like that you don't try to play the news event but just be ready to be in the market when it happens okay that's all you have to do crude oil is another one that I mentioned to you um, has good pre-market activity if you're gonna pick one and I'm I, you know for some reason I'm focused on the pre-market because you asked if there was one market you were gonna trade um, I had said gold crude oil right here it usually has some pretty good pre-market activity but it usually starts right around here right around 8 o'clock okay that's when the good pre-market activity usually starts and you can see there were a couple of opportunities in here right here on the short side now if you're just looking to make two points a day then that was easily here easily handily you could have had this right here your two points right here your two points um, let's see over here and right there so if you were just looking to make two points a day in that one hour span right there it's actually not even a full hour about 40 50 minutes right there there were four opportunities for you to make two points and the market opened up and well right before again right before the market opened up so in this in this one hour span there were five opportunities all right so if that's what you're looking for and that's what that's what we try to show you know if you if you want to trade when you know when the markets are active then again any one of these would be good the ES is going to give you the fewest amount of trades all right but if you're looking to trade with a lot of contracts and the ES is you know a lot meaning you know several hundred then the ES is the one for you um, if you're just looking to trade you know 10 less than 10 less than 20 then any one of these markets would work just fine um, all right that's it guys uh, tomorrow is the partners meeting tomorrow night is the partners meeting everybody who is in on the free trial today um, everybody who's in on the free trial yesterday uh, you should have something in your email right now telling you how to become a partner get into that partners meeting tomorrow night in the meeting tomorrow night Frank I'll try to get that picture together that you've been asking <laughs> that you've been asking for um, for so long and, um, and <laughs> And we'll we'll show you some some cool things about how to trade 
how to trade with only one indicator up here, only one line up here on the price, um, things like that. We went over it in last week's partners meeting. I color coded my uh, my spreadsheet. You can see all the green are up days, and there's my one down day so far this year. That was last week. Um, yeah. So far, so good. You get it. <laughs> all right, I'm uh, gonna wrap it up here and. That, my friends, is the end of the recording.